Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today we are going to do something that I procrastinated for quite a while now. Um, my Philips CM8833 uh, has a broken power switch, and yeah, working on these CRTs is not a trivial task because the tube holds a very high voltage and it's pretty dangerous around these things so uh, I needed some time to research stuff and I made an, another video about discharging a CRT and um, I replaced all the capacitors in that I will link that in here it was part of my um, recreation of my Commodore 64 setup from 1987 that I did uh, for Christmas and yeah, it was quite successful and I survived um, discharging the CRT and replacing the capacitor. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm pretty optimistic that this is going to turn out all right. And I learned a lot from your comments uh, on that video. Again, I feel quite confident to show you how to do it. But I have to say this, don't try this at home, don't uh, quote me on anything, I am not a professional and I am doing this as a hobbyist and I'm not here to tell you how to do it. If you have better ways, um, tell me, I'm very um, eager to learn about these things because uh, I'm just starting out really. And especially these um, CRT uh, monitors still um, scare me a bit. So let's do this. First we have to open up the, the monitor. By the way, here's my uh, preliminary fix for the for the broken power switch. These power switches usually break in that they don't latch anymore. The switch uh, is fine, but inside the switch there's um, some lubricant that should um, make it latch easier and that uh, clocks up. And so there's a little springer thing mechanism that doesn't um, lock anymore. I think that's what's, what breaks in these. So I have a little plectrum here and I just shove it in there and hold it in place. Served me well for, for quite a while now and uh, yeah, recommended a uh, quick fix for this common problem. So I'm using a towel here because I want to put it on there upside down with the screen on the bottom and I don't want to risk scratching it. It'd be difficult to, to scratch the glass but um, there's some anti-glare coating on there that I don't want to damage. There's already some minor scratches in there that you can't really see but I don't want to um, scratch it any further so I'm using a towel here. So and in these things there are five screws. We actually have um, four screws in the corners of the chassis here and you have one screw that is between the um, RCA connectors here. There's another one you have to loosen if you want to get inside there. And it's a pretty nice design. You don't need a long screwdriver to get in there. The screws are pretty much not very deep in there. So you can reach it with a standard screwdriver. Okay, now I should be able to just lift it up here. There we go. And there's a little connector going on to the side because there are there are speakers in there. I want to discharge it before I um, disconnect it, I think. So here's how I do it. Um, again, I don't recommend you do it. Working on this, you always want to only use one hand, by the way. I have connected this to this um, wire that goes around the screen, which should be ground. There's other um, places here, the screws on the, on the sides here, which should be ground too. I think this is a good thing. I, I'm checking with the multimeter if this is really ground as a precaution. Because we, of course, we want to discharge this properly. So this should be ground. Yeah. And we are connected to ground. 
So here's the tool I'm going to use. It's a screwdriver, just a normal screwdriver with a plastic um, grip here. I have put some insulation there, there for safety in case I slip or something. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, I use a big clamp here. You can use a crocodile clamp in a small lead um, because the voltage is high but the current is very very low. Um, it's going to be pretty dangerous still because uh, the, the high voltage is enough to kill you um, and seriously hurt you. So it's not recommended uh, getting shocked by this. So I have connected one side of this to the ground, the chassis ground of the monitor. And I have the other side on this screwdriver here. And they are connected, I checked with the multimeter. And I had, for the last video, I had a resistor in there. And I removed it because the thing is, with the resistor in there, you won't notice if you have discharged the thing. Because if you discharge it like this, without a resistor, it will um, discharge in one bang, so to say. And you are going to notice a pop or a little spark. And um, sometimes it, it's going to be loud, but uh, yeah, most of the times for the smaller monitors it's not going to be that much. Um, but you will hear, you will have a feedback that you have discharged this. With the resistor in place you will never know if you properly discharge, dis discharged the tube before you um, work on it. So so let's do this, I think, and um, see if we, if we get a spark. I'm a bit scared. And you should get the spark before you even reach the the middle there. So there was no no spark at all. So I think I'm pretty sure we are discharged now. Because I'm touching this and touching this. I think maybe this has a bleed resistor in there. So there we are. You can go in there again. This whole um, CRT basically acts as a one huge capacitor. And some of these monitors, I think this is included, have a bleeder resistor in there that um, discharges the tube over time. Um, yeah, So you don't get a spark. I'm really sorry for the people who want to see sparks again. There's no spark on this one as well. So this should be discharged. And what I also learned from your comments is to um, be careful because it recharges over time if you let it let it um, open like this. So you have to um, do it again because, um, before you continue working in this area here. I'm going to remove the um, the speaker stuff here at first, I think. So now we can put this away. Yeah, and here it is. Let's see if we can get the circuit board out of there. There are some large capacitors in the power supply area um, that you should also discharge. Um, you can do this using the same method or just shorting them out. I think I have to desolder some some things here before I can even work on this. There's not a lot of shielding, which is pretty nice design. But it's pretty nasty to work on, I think. So let's see. And I think we can take off the whole circuit board with these screws here. Ah, oh, there's more screws from the other side, I see. Okay, here's more. There's a screw that holds this whole um, thing, the plastic thing where the circuit board rests on, in place. I think I have to remove them to take out the hole. It's nearly like, like a drawer or something, I think. Let's see if I can work on that. And it's all the same screws. That's a nice touch. And again, it's Phillips head screws, which... Uh, 
is my theory is that Phillips um, stuff used Phillips head screws exclusively. <laughs> so let's see how to get this out. I'll just slide it out maybe. Yeah, you can just slide it out. It's just a bit difficult to handle and I'm a bit afraid still of the voltages. But this is just, this is like a, a sliding thing where the circuit board lies in. Nice, nice design. And was molded by Ming Fong Plastics Company Limited <laughs> in February 1993. Nice. I like little details like this. So now we have the circuit board out to an extent that we can work on it. I think I want to um, desolder this um, ground connection here that goes to the to the tube. That yeah, I just wanna I just wanna get rid of that so I can bend the board over. I think that's the only thing that holds it in this top area here. Okay, the thing I want to do first is to discharge the caps so there's no uh, high voltage present anymore. And then I want to, I think I want to um, replace the power switch. And then I want to go over to replacing some caps and lubricating the controls because they are a bit scratchy. The um, potentiometers are a bit scratchy on this one. So yeah, let's see. And as with the last monitor I was working on, um, which was also a Philips, this is pretty convenient because it has all the um, components marked on the back side of the board. And uh, yeah, I want to discharge some of the larger caps. And even see that this is a bipolar one because it has the other ones, the polarized ones have one um, filled uh, half and one thing that is not filled. This one has two um, open ones. That's pretty nice. I, I, I like this kind of circuit board. It's designed to be um, serviceable still, even though it was made in the, in the mid 90s, which is pretty nice. There was a lot of stuff in the mid 90s that uh, wasn't designed to be serviceable already. Um, yeah, it got worse over the years, I think. Yeah, so you could, uh, to discharge them, you could just take a screwdriver and um, zap them and short them against themselves. There's a couple of hundred volts. This is, I think, is a 200 volt um, capacitor. And basically what happens if you touch it, um, it discharges uh, 200 volts into your body, which you don't want, of course. Um, so we have to discharge some of the larger ones. Do you want to see sparks? I think maybe this has some spark potential. Let's see. No. It is completely discharged already, so it's pretty sad. There's no no sparks on this one. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I didn't I didn't use it for some days, so it's completely discharged already. Man, I promise you, I'll do a video with some sparks in it soon. <laughs> so this should be this should be safe to work on now. Let's clean this up. Okay, so here's our switch assembly and I have a, a replacement switch. I think I have to hmm, I think I have to desolder it and then I can just take it out of this um, plastic thingy here. Okay, so we can let's just just pull it out. It's pretty yellow. We could retrobite this part, but it's the only part that's yellow in this whole monitor and it's on the back, so I uh, I think I'll just leave it like that. Maybe we could turn it around and it's better from this side. <laughs> okay, firing up the desoldering station here. And the replacement switch looks a bit different. I think it has more contacts. The original switch is very hard to get and usually you get these ones which have additional contacts here. These two additional contacts you only need the four in the back here, I think, which are, yes, it's exactly the same spacing, would go like this, 
and it is the same size. So these, I have, to, I can just um, basically clip these or bend these aside, I think, and it should fit perfectly. We have to do solder in these here as well because it's this metal part is differently shaped. We have to get rid of that whole thing to get it out properly. We probably have to reattach it. That's not too trivial. I think we have to get the whole thing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a metal bracket, but we have to we have to get it out. The whole switch is attached to it. Let's see if this moves. Yes, it does. Okay, now we should be able to. I uh, just um, move this a bit. Ouch. So I think it should be loose now. We should be able to get it out. So there we go. Yippee! switch. I think we can just reattach the whole the whole thing to the old uh, to the new switch. So as you can see it has the same spacing and stuff but we have to um, get rid of this metal plate and put this metal plate on there. Which I think is just a matter of bending these to the sides. So, and after deliberately poking my finger with my screwdriver, which was <laughs> pretty painful, we are now at the point where we can insert this um, old metal bezel, so to say, into the, well, into the new switch. And we broke off some plastic there, which isn't nice, but won't hurt that much. To bend it a bit into shape, I think. So it fits all oh, this switching thing here. There we go. And I think we can, let's have a look at the circuit board, but I think we can just bend these inwards and we are safe. It's basically, it's another, another second uh, switch for low voltage that is needed for some um, applications. These are um, TV switches. They are standard switches for television and for uh, monitors, as you have seen in this case. So here we are. I don't know if you can see it properly. It's pretty hard to see. But the um, the contacts have little little rings around them, so they can probably take a lot more juice. And there's absolutely nothing where um, the secondary switch contacts go, so we can really just bend them inwards and uh, insert this. So let's uh, put it in there, I think. Bending the, the contacts inwards, so we don't even destroy the switch in case we just we ever want to salvage this and use it for another thing, maybe. So that's not easy. Should be able to insert that into this. Okay, it's promising. Are all our contacts through? Yes, they are. Nice. So, and I absolutely want to solder it in place, but first I want to see if it still fits this part here. Yay! Which it does. Nice. So, give it a little solder it in place, I guess. Maybe we should use some tweezers. Bend them sideways. Oh, there we go. That's what holds the switch in place, I guess. Okay. And then we should put some solder on there, of course. Obviously. The switch is back in operation. Nice.
And I already bought an assortment of uh, the less common values of capacitors. Uh, for example, there, there's this big 400 volts uh, 100 microfarad cap and some smaller uh, 47 microfarad ones at 200 volts, which is this one, for example. Um, so I hope to have most of the values there. I think this bipolar cap it's gonna be difficult. I have some bipolar caps, but they are a lot smaller, and I doubt that they are the, the same characteristics of this one. But we're gonna see about that. And uh, first of all, I'm gonna replace the caps I can. So this is pretty much um, a normal recapping session, as I yeah I did that a lot in my computer videos. So the thing I always take care of is to discharge the caps, which I did um, using, always use the same capacitance, um, use the same type of capacitor. So if it's an electrolytic capacitor, use an electrolytic. Um, you have to replace the electrolytics only in most cases because the um, ceramic cap capacitors, um, basically um, they don't break very often whereas the electrolytics dry out over time and um, age and the values begin to fluctuate and sometimes they can end up um, as a short or they can uh, build up strange resistances and um, basically blow up in the end um, in the worst case and um, the the whole circuit doesn't function as an, as it's intended to be for example, an old audio um, gear that I often um, restaurate, uh, there's, you can significantly, it improves uh, the sound if you um, change the old capac capacitors often. So I won't say always, but in most cases, if you use um, good brand caps, it improves the sound and improves the, the whole. Um, the circuit works closer to what it was intended for. So, um, it's a good thing in the end. I always use good brand caps. These are mostly um, Panasonic, I think. Um, so you don't have to worry about low quality stuff uh, uh, that probably might fail even sooner than the old caps that are on here. So I always use quality stuff. So, so I'm, I'm sure it's um, good capacitors that um, last a while. By the way, you can often tell um, that it's late by me um, saying er uh, and uh more frequently. It's gotten pretty late. <laughs> Let's just say that. So, but, I'm, but I want to at least start recapping this tonight. But I'm mostly um, changing one capacitor at a time, so I don't get the um, values mixed up. Which is pretty handy most of the times. So uh, now we're at the point where I have replaced all the capacitors that I had in stock here. Um, except I think there are some under this um, shield here that I'm going to remove. And I think it's just a matter of bending these uh, metal tabs and um, lifting this off to have a look. So let's do that and see if there's something underneath there that we can... Um, Replace. By the way, I'm not very um, knowledgeable about these um, monitor things at all. So I, 
I know the, the basic principles of how a uh, switch mode power supply works and um, I know the basic principles, the very, very, very basic uh, principles of how this all works, but uh, no, I don't know if I point at any point at the of the circuitry here, I wouldn't be able to tell you what it does. So it's, it's more or less a matter of uh, just replacing components that I know I can replace. Well, I hope so, at least. Hmm. Can't get this off. Why is that? Is there another little tab thing somewhere? It should lift off. Lift up. I really hope. Oh, there we go. There we are, and there are some capacitors indeed. Two of them. Let's see if they are values that I have. It's 10 microfarad one. And the other one is 22 microfarads. So I have both of them in stock, I think. Problem now is that the other side of the board looks like this. Uh, this is soldered to the board, I think. So there is this um, shield, which has been bent up and there is a little yellow wire. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, a little botch wire. And this is definitely from factory because this, this is um, the monitor my sister um, had uh, back in the day. And it was never repaired. So this has to be from factory. It was bought new, as far as I know, at least. So I wonder if any of you um, have the same botch wire in their um, CM8833. Um, two monitors. would be interesting to know. So if anyone um, has this too, let me know. We're going to desolder this shield and uh, have a look at what's underneath there. Look at that. So there's our shields. Here's a little watch wire. So let's see, where are our capacitors? There's one. Get this out. Ta da! That's all the caps I have replaced. So let's reattach the shielding. So and while I'm in here, I want to give this the treatment uh, with uh, my tuner spray, the stuff I use for everything basically. Um, to clean all the potentiometers and little switches that are on here. There's quite a lot and now I can get to them quite nicely, I think. So I'm gonna spray some in here. Because they were a little flaky, which is normal. If they get a little dusty and oh, stuff like that. So what you do is to spray this into little um, holes and cavities on the switches there and then work the switches some so that it gets everywhere and cleans the contacts and the potentiometers you can, these are all open pots I think, so you can just spray it on top there and move them a bit and yeah, usually it works quite well. So let's uh, put it back together, I say. Um, the There are some questions that remain and some strange, strange error values of capacitors I didn't have. I made a little list. The one microfarad I just ran out of, it's just a normal value, but 1.5 and 2.2 at high voltages and 10 microfarad at a high voltage I didn't have in stock, so. Yeah, I will have to open this again. And what I also didn't have, 
I ordered a bipolar cap that uh, has 50 volts and 4.7 microfarads, um, but it's a lot smaller. It's a lot smaller than this one, so I left this one on here because I fear it has a different characteristic um, than the one I got and um, it would probably make things worse if I put in the, the ones I got there. So I just leave this in here um, and won't put in the little ones. They are the size of these little ones here, the ones I got. Uh, it's not much voltage and not much capacity, but for some reason this bipolar cap is huge. So probably it has some, I don't know, ultra low ESR, whatever. I don't know what this is for exactly. So um, yeah, basically I told you I don't have much of a clue with this stuff. So if anyone knows what I can replace this one for, um, for sure, uh, comment on this, please. So I can get a suitable one for this uh, position here. So otherwise, I cleaned the switches now, um, dusted it off, replaced most of the capacitors. Um, so I'm going to reassemble it and see if it still works. And the, the main issue that this had was the, the power switch, of course, um, that I replaced. So that's fixed anyway. I hope I didn't get any of the capacitors in the wrong polarity or stuff like that. So um, it's going to still work, hopefully, fingers crossed. Let's reassemble it and test. So now here's one part where it gets interesting. I want to remove this, um, I think it's called the neck board, from the um, tube where the, the tube is connected to the board. Um, I am going to discharge the tube again to be safe and yeah basically that's a good idea I think. Don't want to scratch it too much because otherwise the um, layers, the coating will be damaged and it won't work as a capacitor anymore and then it won't work as a picture tube anymore. So. Uh, Basically now I think I can take this off. Can Usually you can just pull it off because it's just a, like with the old tubes. Yeah, there we go. We have a little connector there. You can just go to the side there and dust it off a little. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to do that. It's not very, it's not very bad. <laughs> See, much, much worse. So, uh, yeah. Basically, these are the, let me show you a close up of this. So as I said, it's uh, my knowledge of this stuff is very basic. Here are some uh, rings with these little um, handle things that can be moved to adjust the um, picture, the tilt and the, the size and stuff like that. Because um, what this is basically is a huge um, electro, uh, electromagnet that um, there, there are electron rays that are deflected by um, coils. The, the principle is pretty pretty easy to, to understand, I think, but uh, yeah, when it comes to details, um, I'm lost basically, so there's not much I can tell you about that. That's for sure. So and here's a little pin that's a bit bent. Try to bend it back. Hope I didn't damage it too much. Would be a pity. So and you have to be very careful of course with this part of the tube because uh, it's pretty brittle. It's, it's a glass tube basically. And so you can easily break it if you are not careful. There's a lot of dust in there. I think I want to go in there with the, with the brush. So and this one is a 4.7 microfarad one at 200 volts. And of course, I don't have it in stock, so 
I can spare me the desoldering stuff there. And I just add it to the list of capacitors that I need to get to repair this. I'm just going to reassemble this and clean it off a bit. And then uh, we'll make a little test run, I think. And there's another one over here. That's 22 microfarads and 50 volts. I would have that, but I won't take this all apart until I have the um, the other one because I have to desolder the shielding again and stuff like that. So I'm gonna leave it like this for now and reassemble it. I hope I can manage to do so without breaking anything. Which isn't, it's not a trivial task. <laughs> because I have to watch it pretty carefully. So let's solder this, this ground connector back on and then we'll um, put our anode back in, which by the way looks like this from the inside. I don't know if I have shown this. There's two little uh, wires there that are um, hooking into the, into the um, tube here. So it needs some pressure if you want to reinsert it. So I think we can put this back together and give it a little test run. Okay, there we are. I had to lift it off, uh, lift it up a bit to see if it's properly inserted, but now it is. And it's, yeah, it's pretty sturdy there. All right, um, so let's put on the speaker connectors and stuff. So obviously I have my Commodore 64 set up and uh, the monitor and now I am going to turn this on and see if it explodes or if it does anything weird. So, okay, fingers crossed this worked. Um, at least the switch in the off position is off. Let's see. Okay. There's some noisy stuff. There's a seemingly, seems to be a picture there. It's not bad. Has some brightness to it. Obviously, the, the controls are all, um, um, yeah, they are all somewhere, but not where they belong, actually. So the flicker is not there, that's only on the screen. I am going to adjust the camera to make up for that, so you can see how the picture quality looks, maybe, if we get a picture at all. So here we are, there's still some flicker because the camera is not quite in sync with the monitor, but... Um, yeah, I think it's better than before. So let's turn on the Commodore 64 and hope we get a picture out of this. At least it didn't explode or anything. So let's see. I've probably switched to the to completely wrong um, input here. There we are. Yay! This looks doesn't look too bad. I guess it's a bit out of order there. And you can, of course, you can't see anything because the brightness is way off. So this is what we get. Looks pretty nice, actually. I have to adjust it a bit uh, with the brightness controls and stuff. But So this is the brightness, middle brightness, saturation. Okay. I usually turn this down a bit. It switches to the green screen. And the, the switches are no longer uh, dirty, so we can use them properly yeah and the switch works which is the, the main issue with this was uh, that the power switch was stuck works just fine that's uh, pretty nice <laughs> yeah and as you can probably hear 
um, the sound also works flawlessly, so I consider this a success. And I don't think I want to play um, Hexenküche, which is Cauldron, the German version of Cauldron, um, in front of an audience, uh, because I pretty much... It's, it's a very hard game, to be fair, and I suck at it, as with most games. So I won't play this one for you, um, but uh, there are people who say that it's a very enjoyable game. I Most of the times, without cheating, I die in the first um, couple of... Uh, screens basically because it's pretty hard so yeah that's it for now if you know anything about the um, bipolar cap and where to get a, a suitable spare part um, just comment on this or write me an email follow me on Twitter which is a good idea because I'm quite active there and if you want to know what I'm up to um, that's a good way and uh, yeah, I'm pretty much I'm pretty much posting something every day on there if I find the time. So, yeah, special thanks go to my Patreon uh, supporters. Uh, I'm still very overwhelmed with how much money you're donating, you guys. It's it's so it's making things so much easier for me at this point um, because I don't have an, I don't earn an awful lot of money in my my regular day job that I have, um, and it makes this stuff so much easier to to buy um, spare parts and to buy um, things to show you on the channel so thank you very very much and uh, everybody who's who's um, willing to join the um, patreon supporters is um, welcome of course um, because it's help it helps a lot to bring this channel to another level so yeah um, if you're not a patreon supporter I want to thank you as well because um, it's great that so many people watch this and comment on this and uh, yeah, thank you for your thumbs and thank you for your comments. Thank you for subscribing if you have done so. If you haven't, you feel free to subscribe. I'm always happy to have more subscribers and there's going to be a lot more of this stuff on this channel. So thank you all. Have a nice evening, whatever time of day it is at your place. Um, thanks. I'm Jan Peter. See you all soon. Bye.